Hey, how's your old things dentistry.com? Well, I can't believe it. I got another split tooth. It's crazy. So take a look. I've got an endo exam. Reach out to dentist man from Norway, all things Norway. That was a pretty funny joke. And yeah, let's take a look. So here is the split tooth, second upper right premolar, now tooth number one five, and you can see the patient's filled with food debris. And when I first saw that, I'm like, well, here we go. Uh, as the thumbnail has it, we have a split tooth and a gingival abscess to go along with it. So what you're going to see here is I'm just kind of flexing to make sure it is a split tooth, and we're going to apply actually air and blow some of that debris and see how deep the if I can see how deep the the fracture is. And here we're going to flex it. So again, that's confirming uh, that we have a split tooth. Yeah. Now, when I, you can see on the radiograph here, um, tooth number one five and tooth number one four. So both by cuspids, they actually have uh, radiographic indications of a lesion. And you always have to wonder when you see that on a periapical radiograph. You know, one of the tips is the question is why are these teeth necrotic? And likely it's got something to do with the fracture. So. Um, this is another radiograph, just sort of a, more of a distal shot. Um, I elected not to take any more radiographs after seeing the patient. Uh, initially, these are the ones that were sent with him because there was no need, uh, seeing as the tooth was fractured. So here what we're going to do is we're going to continue with our endodontic exam. And um, I have my perio probe in my, my hand. That's a gingival abscess. Patient's been on antibiotics for a week, prescribed to them him previously. I get a maximum of six to seven millimeters as his tooth was pretty sensitive. And by this point, the patient was, you know, he was, didn't want to uh, be probed too, diff too deeply. So had I anesthetized the patient, likely I could have gotten a deeper uh, probing depth, especially where those, those, the split goes uh, right through the tooth. So what I'm checking for here is on the number one four and to see uh, if there are any cracks going down to the osseous level. This is a really simple way. I love it because it's super specific, using a cotton tip applicator to do your, your palpation. So I'm just palpating uh, right around on the buccal tissue. There was some apical sensitivity. And here you're going to see the percussion test. And now we're going to go to the cold test. So you'll see we have tooth number one, two, and one, three. The lateral and the canine respond normally to cold. Tooth number four has turned out negative. And you can see the periapical radiolucency on the radiograph. But I wanted to reconfirm, make sure it is necrotic. Uh, tooth number one, six, the first molar gives you a normal response. And then I, you know what, just to make sure on that one, four, because I want to get a, confirm the diagnosis if the tooth is cold, we want to make sure it's super cold, and it became necrotic. Now this is really cool because, well I think it is anyways, I'm able to get a beautiful image of the split down the tooth number one five, and I'm using just the handpiece and the fiber optics, and now I'm on the one four, you can see how the light shines right through the tooth, but you see that little bit of a fracture there? I'm wondering what you guys think. Would you take this, extract this tooth, would you do the endo, not on the one five here, but actually on the one four. And here you can see the split again, and then I'm going to flash through the, the tooth number one six, and you'll see again the halo, so indicating no fracture. So hopefully that helped. Uh, I really appreciate your time to watch through the video and get to this point at least. And if you have any points or comments, please put them in below, and also subscribe, that little thing over there because we're going to start we're going to have a lot more content in the next upcoming weeks and my intent is to start sharing what I learned from my colleagues and my other clinical friends and uh, this is a shout out to my buddy Amir he doesn't know I'm wearing his uh, lab coat so anyways have a good one